Uh, I hope everybody is following all of the guidelines and we'll get into those in a second. Let me first introduce, this is the Meg's Point Nature Center, which is located in Connecticut. So if you're watching from outside of Connecticut, unfortunately we are shut down here as most of you probably across the country are. Uh, as soon as the Nature Center opens, we'll let you know because we want people to come down and see the animals that we have here. I've got some amazing animals and we're doing little pieces of what we would normally do on a, on a daily basis. So as soon as this crisis is over, I hope that everybody is able to come down to the Mex Point Nature Center. I'm gonna ask that as you post questions and comments, please put down where you're from so that we know uh, where we're reaching with these, with these posts. I also want to remind everybody that's in Connecticut that fishing season is open, so you can get out there and enjoy some open spaces. Connecticut has some wonderful fishing within our state parks and forests, so make sure you take advantage of that. But keep in mind, social distance, no matter what, you should be six feet away. Now I know when you're fishing, you don't want to be any closer than six feet anyway. You want to be further away than that. But keep that in mind all the time. We need to maintain our social distance. We need to wash our hands. We need to cough into our elbows, stay at home. All of these things are gonna to help to keep us safe. Now, I know that you guys are starting to go stir crazy. You're at home all the time. You're doing your schoolwork at home. You don't get to visit your friends. The only way you see them is uh, through voice chat or, or Zoom or whatever you're using out there. So I hope that these programs give you a little bit of something extra to do during the day. I'm having a blast doing them. I hope that you're enjoying it. Uh, I think that we're you know, seeing some really good feedback. So uh, as long as I'm having fun and you're having fun, let's just keep doing this. Now, today's animal, super, super special animal. Uh, we're gonna be talking about a frog. And I know, okay, we've talked about some frogs. Frogs aren't that exciting. This frog is really, really special, okay? This is the leopard frog. And leopard frogs are very common across Connecticut, but people don't know that that's what they're looking at. Usually when they see a leopard, or I just did it, leopard frog. Usually when they see a pickerel frog, we're talking about a pickerel frog, they think it's a leopard frog, okay? Leopard frogs are endangered in Connecticut. Very, very hard to find. Pickerel frogs are all across the state. They look very, very similar, okay? They're hard to tell them apart. Let's just take out the pickerel frog. I'm gonna reverse that several times during the day, okay? So we're talking about a pickerel frog, not a leopard frog. I will probably reverse it again. It's kind of hard to tell, okay? But the spots on a pickerel frog are rectangular and irregular. Sometimes the spots even blend together so that they end up looking more like stripes than spots. For a leopard frog, the spots are more round and pretty regular, okay? So they have these round spots going all the way down their back where the pickerel frog has rectangular spots going down their back. Now another big difference, this is Connecticut's only poisonous frog. Yes, we have poisonous frogs in Connecticut. Most people know of the poison dart frogs from South America that can be very, very dangerous for people, but the pickerel frog is poisonous. It is not going to affect you the way the poison dart frog does. It would taste really bad. It might make your mouth numb and tingly and all foamy. Um, but it does that to animals that are trying to eat the frog. So this is a great defense if an animal comes along that wants to eat the frog. So there are lots of things that eat frogs. Uh, otters, raccoons, even skunks or fox will like to eat a frog. When they try and eat it, it's going to taste bad. It's going to make their mouth feel all funny and they're probably not gonna try and eat another one of those. They learn to stay away from these. Even some snakes that eat frogs stay away from the pickerel frog. Some snakes are able to eat them, 
but most snakes that eat frogs stay away from the pickerel frog because they taste so bad. Now the thing where the pickerel frog becomes really dangerous is to other amphibians. Remember, we talked about in another episode how amphibians can absorb things through their skin. The toxin from the pickerel frog can be absorbed into the skin of other species of frogs and actually kill them. So you have to keep them separate from other frogs. Now let's take a moment. I want to remind everybody that if you go to megspointnaturecenter.org, all the videos that we've done are archived there and you'll be able to see all the other amphibian videos that I've done. So we'll, we'll be able to see uh, the other frogs that I've already talked about. Now, the pickerel frog, you can tell the boys from the girls. The girls are usually a little bit larger and a bit darker than the boys. The boys have a lighter color pattern and a little bit smaller. Not really an easy way to tell because it takes a couple of years for this frog to get to be full size, okay? Now remember, we've talked about amphibians and they can metamorph. They can change from one thing into another. So they start out as eggs and what do they turn into? Tadpoles or polywogs. And then in a few months, usually a couple of months, they're going to turn into frogs and they hop out and start hopping around. The frogs in Connecticut, there aren't a lot of frogs that stay by water all the time. This frog may stay by ponds most of the time. It's by any waterway, any big waterway. Uh, it's going to be by lakes, ponds, rivers, streams, some really big rivers. Not too small of a stream. It needs some stable water that's going to be there all the time. So this frog is going to be all around those waterways. But what this frog does very often in Connecticut is it hops off and finds really wet fields or marshy areas and it will live the summer there. If it gets too dry, it's going to have to move back to a waterway that stays all the time. But after it lays its eggs, it's going to hop out and find a really, you know, a nice wet field because what it likes to eat? Spiders, lots of different kinds of insects and those live in fields. So this frog will hop off and look for those really great places to get its food. Now the polywog of this particular frog is a herbivore, okay? So herbivores only eat plants. It's going to eat algae in the ponds and, and even puddles where the eggs are laid. The adults are carnivores. That means they're eating insects and spiders. They're eating other animals. Okay, so it's really cool that they change when they metamorph from a tadpole to a frog, it changes what they like to eat. Okay, uh, let's talk some other things about this frog. You can see the yellow coloring on the bottom of its legs. That frog just got away. <laughs> I'll be right back as soon as I catch my frog. That's what happens when you're doing live shows. The bright yellow on the underside of the leg that signifies that this frog is probably toxic. So it's either poisonous, in this case it's poisonous, sometimes bright colors can mean that it's venomous and there's a difference, we'll talk about that when we talk about our copperhead. But that's what that bright color is, that's a warning saying, stay away from me, I could taste really bad or make you sick or I could kill you. Okay, so we do have to be careful keeping those frogs separate from the other frogs. All right. I've told you a lot about these frogs. Let's see if you guys have any questions. Um, when was the first time it was seen? So these frogs actually not, are not even out yet. In, into April, that's when they're really going to start coming out. That's when they emerge from their hibernation. So these frogs will bury themselves in the mud or not, not really deep. They'll just get into the mud uh, for the winter. And then starting in April, they'll start to come out and they'll be laying their eggs in May and June. And then uh, a couple of months later, those eggs will be coming out all over the place. All right, do we have any other questions here? I see, wow, we're up to 50 people watching right now. That's great. Does anybody have any questions? If you have questions, pop them up. I'm not seeing any questions right now. Some of you may have asked questions that have gone by if you want to repeat it. Um, let me know. 
what the questions are. I can tell you some other things about these frogs. We actually don't know how long these frogs live. So most frogs are only going to live, you know, seven, eight years tops. So this frog, we don't know, but it's probably around that. And they can lay 700 to a couple of thousand eggs. So they do lay lots of eggs. I'm looking. Uh, this frog is not listed in the state of Connecticut as an endangered species. And for the rest of the country, it's really not listed as a species of concern. Okay, so this is, they call it least concern for the international endangered species list. Um, However, the leopard frog, it's endangered in Connecticut. In most of the United States, leopard frogs are far more common than the pickerel frog. All right. And the leopard frog is not poisonous uh, like, the, like the pickerel is. But because they look so similar, it may deter animals from trying to eat them. Because the animals can't tell a leopard frog from a pickerel frog. And they know some of them they need to stay away from. So they may stay away from it. Wondering what they eat and what colors they usually are. So the one we have is pretty dark brown. They can get a metallic green with dark spots, uh, much lighter than that color. So they'll just lighten and darken the same shades that you see there, but lighter and darker. Black spots though. And what they eat are mostly spiders and insects. They have to be small enough for them to fit in their mouths though. What is we have? How can the frog still live oh, it went by oh live in this area with unpredictable weather uh, that is one of the concerns so as weather patterns change we get very worried about some of our frogs winter is starting much later and then we can get a cold snap into march if we had a cold snap in april it could be dangerous for the frog but the frogs are really good at being able to freeze and thaw and still be okay. So frogs are not going to be affected as much as some of our other animals by the changing weather. Frogs wake up, hibernates until April. So yeah, this frog is going to be buried for almost the whole winter. If it does get a warm snap earlier, some of the frogs will come out. This one typically not though. It's pretty solid that it'll be out in April. Can the eggs be collected and hatched by people? I'm going to say probably not a good idea. We've mentioned many times that wild animals should be in the wild. And I know lots of people will take them in, hatch them, and then let them go right away. If you let them go right away after they hatch, you might be able to do it, but you, it's really hard to tell their eggs from other frog eggs. The, the eggs of the pickerel frog look almost the same as the wood frog. Uh, they are at different times of the year. They only overlap a little bit, and, and they're probably not overlapping very much, but you want to make sure you're not taking a salamander's eggs or some other animals that are an endangered species which you're not supposed to have at all. So you need to be really careful about collecting eggs and then getting them back in the wild so that they all have the best chance to survive. An excellent question here, are they find, found worldwide? This frog, the pickerel frog, is only found in the eastern United States. Uh, and it only goes a little bit past the Carolinas uh, so it's from the lower regions of Canada down past the Carolinas, to the bottom of the Carolinas, typically where you're going to see these pickerel frogs. Ah, cool. Somebody has rescued 65 tad tadpole eggs from the pool. That is a great thing to do, especially if you're going to be putting chlorine in your pool. That's really bad. Amphibians don't survive that at all. If during the winter you're not treating your pool. A lot of times the amphibians will go down there. They'll lay their eggs in there. Before you open up that pool, make sure you get them all out. Uh, a lot of times they'll be able to uh, emerge out of their eggs. Their tadpoles, they turn into frogs before you even get your pool open. The pickerel frog, though, probably not going to happen because they're emerging out in the or turning into frogs in the summertime. 
So the wood frog could lay their eggs in your pool and be out before you even know it. But a good thing to try and, and uh, rescue them. Do they stay with their babies? I love that question. None of the amphibians really take care of their babies. Once their eggs are laid, the parents are going back to, to their home uh, area, usually out on land, and they're not taking care of their babies. So they're going to be on their own as soon as their eggs are laid. Okay, so we've had some great questions going by. Um, I want to remind everybody that we have the Virtual Learning Center on our website, megspointnaturecenter.org. Be sure you stop in there, take a look at all the great things that we have. All of these videos are archived there. And we're going to be putting up, hopefully by the end of the day, you're going to see a springtime scavenger hunt. So uh, look for that. We're also going to be adding some extra videos that we're not doing as Facebook Live videos, but we're doing more of a production. Um, it'll probably be uh, posted on YouTube. Uh, we're looking into how we can do that. So look for a lot more things to come. Uh, it's looking like we're probably not going to be going back into school, at least not through April. So um, we'll be doing these programs right through April. Eventually, I'm going to run out of animals here at the Nature Center. So if anybody has a suggestion or knows of a place where I can go and visit an animal that I haven't talked about, I'd love to go and see the animals. We'll keep our social distance, but other animals would be fantastic, so keep those suggestions coming. We have to give a thank you to the Friends of Hammonasset. They are providing food for all of these animals while the building's closed and we're not getting our regular donations. Our Friends organization is, has stepped up and promised that we're not going to have any hungry animals, so great to see. No hungry animals. Make sure you like these videos, follow us on Facebook, like us on Facebook. It really helps get our message out that you know, we're all working together on this. This is the small thing that the Megs Point Nature Center can do for all of you. And I encourage you to keep washing your hands, keep your social distance, and we'll do the best we can. We can get through this. We're all working together. So thank you for tuning in to another episode of My Favorite Animal.